My name is Roy Simons and I was in Troy House from 1935 until 1942. Uh, during that time I became uh, captain of Troy House and eventually uh, a prefect in the lower sixth and then a senior prefect in 1942. I was the least favourite subject for always English, both, both grammar and li literature. I suppose my favourite subject was physics, without any doubt, and chemistry possibly a good second. We'd got very used to the old school. It was obviously a, a, an Edwardian school, um, typical of, of glazed, ti glazed tiles on the wall and so on, and narrow staircases. When we got to Pritable Chase, of course, it was a lovely, nice, clean school with, with nice new desks and so on, which we never had in, in the previous uh, environment. And um, uh, there was a separate gymnasium and, uh, and, and dining hall and, 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 and a wonderful big hall as well. Um, it, it was, it was a, a great place to, to be in. And the, the, um, the laboratories were all concentrated at one end and the, and the lesson rooms were all concentrated at, at the other end of the school. It was a, a very nice environment to be in. Oh, the teachers, of course, were all uh, much, obviously much older than us, and, and, and uh, we all in, in awe of most of them. Uh, in particular, Mr. Edwards, who was in charge of the of the, of the lower school, he, he had a frightening appearance. One of the math teachers had been called up when we were doing mathematics more advanced, uh, and this teacher had, been, had got called up. I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was Mr. Smithen, possibly, and. Um, uh, Mr. Edwards was drafted in to take this class, and unfortunately, he was learning as much about it as we were at the time. <laughs> in terms of favourites, uh, Billy Wyatt, I think, was was our, my favourite because he took physics, and it was a subject which I enjoyed uh, no end. And he also took geology as well, which was an unusual subject to find in the school curriculum. Arthur Hutchings it was, it was another. Uh, important person as far as I was concerned because he taught music and I was very interested in the music curriculum. Uh, Arthur Hutchins at that time was editing music for some of the well-known composer, composers and conductors like Adrian Bolt and Thomas Beecham and he um, uh, also courted Miss Haverson who was the school secretary who he eventually married and then after the war he'd been, he'd been in the RAF he became professor of music at Durham, and then subsequently at Exeter. When war was imminent, Southend started to prepare vigorously for, for that event. The whole of the seafront was was um, was covered with very large concrete uh, blocks, all the way from Lee to Shubriness, about ten miles of concrete blocks, in an attempt to prevent. An immediate overrun with some sort of with vehicles. Uh, the seafront became uh, barriered off and it became uh, known as HMS Westcliff with a large naval detachment based at the Crowstone Road area. The ATC was set up in the school um, just before, I can't, remember, can't remember exactly when it started, but we were number 640 squadron. Uh, in, in the first instance, we did not have any uniforms, but we did do drill and, and practice signalling by semaphore and also with oldest lamps. And some of our uh, boys who were in the ATC used to run messages by cycling the, the mile and a quarter down the pier, carrying messages from the Palace Hotel, which was become the, the, uh, the control centre, to the people at the far end. Um, as time went on, I was responsible for designing Morse sounders uh, so that people could learn Morse uh, and, and um, uh, become competent in that. And then we had, had uniforms eventually and, uh, and it all looked rather, rather better. We knew that the children from London had been evacuated some time earlier and then s subtly uh, during the period of Dunkirk evacuation, we had three days' notice saying that we were going to be evacuated on June the 2nd. And we were all, all worried, there's no doubt about it, because none of us had ever been away from home for more than a day at a time. We were only allowed to take one bag, which we could carry, 
and only one change of clothes. That was that was the end. That was it. My father took me up to the school. He walked up with me, and we got on a bus. And this bus took uh, uh, several buses. Took all the pupils to the. Um, the, the LMS station in South End, and there was a train there which was obviously a main line train, not like the usual trains that went from South End. And we we boarded this train with, with with many hundreds of other children, and it went, and it travelled for about four hours uh, without stopping uh, until we got to uh, our destination. On the journey, well, we did not know where we were going. Um, we didn't go through London. Um, we, we eventually came, to, we started going through places which were obviously full of chimneys, and these were clearly the potteries, so we were going up north somewhere. And eventually, we, we saw lots and lots of, of coal trucks, all with names on the side of, of, of collieries, which of course, was quite foreign to us being in the, from the southeast. And, it, and then we started seeing. Uh, Pit, pit head winding gears, lots of them, and so we knew we were in some sort of colliery area, but it was quite foreign to us. We didn't understand what it was all about, and eventually we we stopped at this station, which we discovered was Mansfield. I was billeted with three families. The first one was interesting because the, the, the lady was much younger than her husband and didn't quite know what to do with us. The next family where we were with until I was unwell, um, Mr. and Mrs. Miller. Mrs. Miller was a wonderful cook, uh, and, and cooking was all done on a range with coal firing, of course, and the, her prime article was bread. She produced the most wonderful bread you could ever imagine, which kept fresh for a, at least a week. Mr. Miller worked in a viola factory because there was a large viola factory in the, in the valley, and he was responsible for carding wool and so on, and we had a very nice time. And then when I was with the Barkers, the, um, the family after, when I went back again, that was even more interesting because the, um, Mr. Barker was the shop steward for the local co-op, and he was very full with all those sort of activities. And he, they had two daughters, uh, one who was married to a... a um, a great athlete who was in the RAMC as a driver and the other one was a nurse who during my time in hospital had also been bandaging me as, as, a, as, a, as a practice nurse. Well, once we had got settled in at Queen Elizabeth Grammar School and we were there every afternoon including Saturdays it was as near normal as it could be except there was a major shortage of textbooks and um, uh, so that we, we had a fairly full curriculum being taught and bear in mind that we were uh, due to take GCSE or whatever it was called in those days, school certificate in those days uh, in, in, that, in that summer and of course it was only a few weeks after we'd evacuated that we had to sit the examinations. I, I became uh, a senior prefect as it was called those days or school captain as it would be known today uh, to organise the, the prefect's duties and say, make certain that they ha had responsibility for their particular house activities. Um, we started again to try and do some sports activities uh, on a small way. Um, and I'm, the only thing I really remember doing there was to, to, to set up the, um, the loud speaking facilities for, for, an, for an attempted sports day. Most prefects were uh, when they were appointed were in the sixth form but um it was usual or, or, or to have a, a a prefect in the lower sixth form and i happened to be the 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 person chosen to be the um the lower sixth prefect and th therefore I, I i was able to have a a school cap the one that i'm wearing now which it turns out to be the very very last velvet bl dark blue a, a dark green cap that was ever ever made. This process of wearing a school cap was part of the rules of the game. Uh, Dr. Moore was insistent that if you did not wear a school cap, you would be in for a high jump. Uh, and this caused me some difficulty on occasions because when I went out with some of my lady friends, they were not at all keen to find they were going out someone who was 
a schoolboy. And um, so I had to, with great care sometimes, not wear a cap and hope that I didn't get discovered, which I was fortunately able to uh, see it through. <laughs> In the spring of, of 1941, I was taken ill. Um, it came, came upon me when I was playing football with Mr Phelps, of course, uh, and I felt it was extremely cold. And they diagnosed me as having uh, cerebrospinal meningitis. And by luck, they had a new drug called MMB-293, which was an experimental drug. And they, they, they gave that to me. And then I was taken into the cottage hospital in, in, in Mansfield and stayed there for some weeks, uh, d during which time I did recover. But I was very, very weak indeed. In fact, they tried to get me to cook a kick a football and I could not do it. And eventually, um, my, my mother came up and um, I was taken back to South End and stayed in South End r right through the summer until the um, until to the beginning of the autumn term. But those people who stayed at school in Mansfield uh, went to a, a, a forestry camp run by Mr. and Mrs. Britnor at Carberton Lakes, and they, they had a wonderful time doing forestry work and um, and having all their food cooked over a. a, a, a an open fire and so on. I think they had a good time. I, 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 I'm sorry I missed it. <laughs> in terms of other activities, I have to say that there were one or two rather nice things went on, which were similar to Men's to South End. Uh, for example, music concerts. For example, they um, uh, there was concerts in 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 the cinema with, with visiting uh, international people, uh, and that, I enjoyed going to those too. Well, we, we obviously were aware of air raids generally, and we certainly knew about the, the air raid which had damaged the school, which was one of the earliest raids on South End. The um, byproduct of this um, raid on the school was that Mr. Paul, one of the physics masters, uh, was very p p keen to recover a, a, a glass prism from his physics uh, apparatus room, and I was sent back to school to South End. And I think I was probably the first person, other than the people who were boarding up the windows, to get to get an entry into the school. And I found this prism amongst all the glass debris and took it back to Mr Palmer. Uh, and with trepidation, I pointed out to him that, oh dear, it had a corner knocked off. And he said, never mind, boy, it's been like that for years. <laughs> oh, I'm sure being uh, evacuated changed or everyone who was evacuated. It changed their personality. It also in makes them very much more self-sufficient. All those things that you'd relied on mum to do in the past were no longer there. And um, uh, so one had to think very much for oneself and plan for, your, for one's day without any help from someone else, even to the extent of making certain you got the washing done or even cleaning your teeth. The other thing was, was quite noticeable, that, that we suddenly found new words. You didn't have coal mines, you had pits, and you had um, pit tips, and uh, you had uh, colliers and people like that, who, who were new, new terms to us all. And some of the, lang some of the words were unusual. Uh, the word Mardi, which um, meant silly, was a new word to all of us. And find people saying e bargum as part of their ordinary ordinary conversation, slightly reminiscent of the music hall to us. <laughs> I, I think it was noticeable that the people in Mansfield were friendly. Um, I, I think you could live in South End and not talk to your next door neighbour for years, uh, but in Mansfield, every everyone talked to everyone else. It was that was the, that was the general feeling. It was a more of a, a friendly town. I would say. In one sense, I was almost sad to come back because I got on so well with the Barker family that it was rather nice. It was rather a nice um, episode. Uh, but um, we obviously the best thing was to get back home.